Today's demo is about how you can remotely access other PCs over the internet for free. Maybe you're working from home and need to access your work PC, or perhaps you're the tech support for your family and friends. AnyViewer is a software application that will let you remotely control other PCs from anywhere with an internet connection. AnyViewer works on all versions of Microsoft Windows, and you can also use iOS and Android devices to remotely control other Windows PCs. You can download it and use it for free, or you can upgrade to the Pro or Enterprise version to allow for supporting many more PCs at the same time, along with many additional features. To get started with AnyViewer, open a web browser and navigate to anyviewer.com and click on the Download Freeware option. Click on Free Download and save the installation file to your PC. Let's click on the downloaded installation file to install AnyViewer. Click Install Now. Once complete, untick this box if you don't want to join the User Experience Improvement Program. Click Enjoy Now to launch AnyViewer for the first time. On the left side of the application window, there are four options which are Login, Connect to a Remote PC, Manage Devices, and Change Settings. On the left hand side is the device ID and security code of your PC. Any viewer works by assigning a device ID and security code to each PC. Both the local and remote PC need to have any viewer installed. If you want to allow someone to connect and remotely access your PC, you will need to tell the other person what your device ID and security code is. And if you want to connect to someone else's PC, you would enter their device ID in the partner ID box. Let's take a look at how it works. Here we have two different PCs in different locations. They both have AnyViewer installed. In this example, the Windows 11 PC on the right will be the local PC, and the Windows 10 PC on the left will be the remote PC that we will connect to and take control. I'll enter the device ID of the remote Windows 10 PC into the partner ID box on the local Windows 11 PC, then I'll click on Connect. I can then send a request to the other PC for them to allow me to have remote access, or I can enter the security code if they already gave it to me. First, let's try sending a request. A box pops up on the remote PC asking for them to allow the connection. Once they click allow, the remote screen will then open up on the local PC. You can then use that PC as if you were sitting in front of it. I'll disconnect from the remote PC by clicking on the cross in the top right of the application window. This time I'll connect using the security code of the remote PC. The security code is case sensitive, so you'll need to enter it exactly as it is shown. This time I get connected straight away without the other person having to allow the connection. I can then do whatever it is I need to do on that PC. Let's go to a single screen view to get a better idea of how it will look on your PC. Now we're just looking at the local PC, but we still have a connection to the remote PC. There's a toolbar at the top of the screen. You can click on the arrow to hide or show the toolbar. Click on Adaptive to enlarge or shrink the screen to fit the current window size. Click on Screen to change the screen resolution of the remote PC. There are several resolutions to choose from. The mode icon allows you to set the connection to either high quality, balanced or high speed. You can also choose to hide the desktop wallpaper to speed up the connection if required. The chat icon allows you to open a chat window to send and receive messages with the remote PC. The files icon allows you to transfer files to and from the remote PC. This option requires you to log in so let's do that now. If you don't have a login, you can sign up for one for free. Once you're in the file transfer window, the files for the local PC are shown on the left, and the files on the remote PC are on the right. Navigate to the file you want to transfer. Select the destination folder on the other PC, then click on the arrow to start the transfer. You'll see details of the transfer at the bottom of the window. 
The operation icon allows you to send specialized keystrokes to the remote PC, such as control lock deletes, lock, shut down, or restart the remote PC. The last icon allows you to switch between windowed and full screen view. OK, let's take a look at some of the options and settings in AnyViewer. The login box is where you can log in and log out of your AnyViewer account. You can change to a different user, change your password, or enter a license code to upgrade to a Pro or Enterprise account. The next option is the Connect screen. This is the screen you'll use to set up a connection to another PC or allow another PC to connect to yours. Your current device ID and security code will be shown here. Your device ID will always be the same ID, but the temporary security code changes every time any viewer restarts by default. The next option is the device screen. This screen will show you how many devices are currently assigned to your account. You assign a device to your account simply by logging into any viewer on that device. If you reach your device limit, you can unassign devices by right clicking on the device and selecting unassign. To permanently remove the device, you can right click the device again and select remove. If you want to assign that device again in the future, just sign into any viewer on that device. And the last option is the settings screen. The unattend setting allows you to enable or disable one click connections to an assigned device. Set my security code allows you to set a separate permanent security code. You can then accept connections from either the frequently changing temporary code or your pre-configured security code. This is useful for when you want to have someone connect when the PC is unattended. So they'll be able to connect automatically without someone having to be there to allow the connection. The next group of settings is under recipient. These settings relate to when a remote PC connects to this PC. Here, you can toggle on or off whether you need to allow a request. When this setting is enabled, a remote user gets a choice to either send you a request, which you then need to allow, or they can choose to enter the temporary security code. If this setting is disabled, the remote user can only connect by entering the temporary security code. In the next setting, you can toggle on or off whether to use a temporary security code. As above, a remote user gets a choice to either send you a request, which you then need to allow, or they can choose to enter the temporary security code. If this setting is disabled, the remote user can either submit a request for control, or they can enter the pre-configured security code from the unattend setting shown in the previous section. They won't be able to enter a temporary security code. Here, you can also choose whether the temporary security code should change. The options are change at the end of each remote connection, every time the any viewer software restarts, or you can choose to change the security code manually. When this option is set, you'll see a refresh icon next to the security code. Clicking on the refresh icon will generate a new security code. The next group of settings is under controller. These settings relate to when this PC connects to another remote PC. Here you can set the default option for the image quality of the connection. The available options are high quality, which is only available in the Pro or Enterprise version, Balanced, which is the default option, or high speed. You can also change these options from the mode icon on the toolbar when in a remote session. You can choose whether to hide the desktop wallpaper to improve the speed of the connection. And you can choose whether to save the security code for automatic connection next time. The next group of settings is under security. There are two options which are both disabled by default. You can choose for the Any Viewer application window to lock after the application is closed or minimized to the system tray in the taskbar. If this setting is enabled, whenever the Any Viewer application is closed or minimized, the application will lock after the specified number of minutes and it will need to be unlocked by entering the password of the account that is currently logged into Any Viewer. You must be logged in with your Any Viewer account to use this setting. The minimum number of minutes you can specify is 1. In the next setting here, you can choose to set the Any Viewer application to lock whenever the local PC is locked. If this setting is enabled, whenever the local PC is locked, after unlocking the local PC, you will also need to unlock Any Viewer by entering the password of the Any Viewer account that you are logged in with. And finally, the last group of settings is under Basic. Here you can set Any Viewer to start automatically when Windows starts. This is enabled by default and it's a good idea if you want to allow unattended access to your PC. Any viewer, by default, will prevent your PC from going to sleep. Again, this is a good idea if you are going to allow unattended access. If the PC went to sleep, then the remote PC wouldn't be able to connect to it. 
Under device name, you can change how your PC will look to other PCs when you connect to them. By default, it will be the same as the host name of your PC. Changing the device name in any viewer doesn't change the local PC host name. It's just the display name of the device in any viewer. The last option is language. You can change the display language that is used in AnyViewer. Any changes here require you to restart the AnyViewer application. There is one more option to be aware of. At the bottom of the main settings window, you can choose to reset all of the options to their default settings. You've now seen all the options and features available in AnyViewer, but if you'd like more information or you need to double check anything covered in this demo, you can head over to the AnyViewer support page where it details all of the settings shown here. Now let's take a quick look at using AnyViewer on a mobile device. Here we are on an iPad. I'll go into the App Store and search for AnyViewer. I'll click on the download for AnyViewer remote desktop to install it to this device. I'll launch AnyViewer from the home screen and I'll skip through the welcome message. Now we need to log in with our AnyViewer account. We then see any devices assigned to our account. Let's connect to a Windows device. You pretty much get all the same features that are available in the desktop version. Here we are controlling our Windows desktop from an iPad. Okay, that's it for this demo of AnyViewer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this demo, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. And I'll see you in the next one.